Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cloud Wars Live. We are exploring the digital revolution, and we've got a very interesting guest today who's going to talk about next generation HCM. Lohit Sarma is the vice president and head of the uh, next gen HCM business at Lithium. So, Lohit, welcome. Glad to have you in Cloud Wars Live. Well, thanks for having me, Bob. Super excited to be here. Yeah, it's uh, this has been your baby for a while, right, Lohit? Uh, it has been. Um, something you've worked on a while, the company's made some great progress and it looks like you're ready to move up into the next level. How's it going? Oh, it's, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, you're right. It's been uh, my baby and it's been something I've been working on now for close to seven years. Um, and we've got a great um, investment and support from the broader ADP leadership team. Um, so we officially launched in 2019. Uh, we've had a certain set of beta clients um, and then we sold a bunch and now we're working on the getting clients live and scaling um, the next gen HCM product. Uh, we've also launched next gen HCM in Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, and Canada. Um, so it's fun times uh, to be at uh, Lithion, which is responsible for building out the next gen HCM product. Well, that's uh, congratulations on the, uh, the, the global uh the global presence at Lohit. I, I've been to Australia a few times. It's a great place. If you need any customers there who, uh, or if you've got any customers who need some help from an outside person who doesn't really know much about your product, but is interested in going to Australia, please, I'm your guy. I, I'll take you up on that, Bob. I mean, I, I hear you have quite the fan following across the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a fascinating subject these days, Lohit. And so I think you know, entrepreneurs, dreamers, builders like you are exactly what makes the business so interesting. And I wanted to ask along those lines, right? You know, the overall field of uh, HCM is pretty crowded. So what is it that next gen HCM, what do you have going that differentiates you? Yeah, you know, when we um, started examining this space, uh, what we found out um, when we looked at our competitors in the market, there are basically two main um sets of uh, products. One is your vendor, the one vendor that provides everything. The other is an amalgamation of a bunch of products that uh, organizations would use. What we noticed was a market where these two circles intersect, where you could offer a core set of applications and the ability for you to pick and choose some of these other applications that are available in the market. Now, the best part of working uh, within the ADP ecosystem is we can truly leverage some of these uh, third-party applications via our marketplace, right? And then, so for us, it becomes, the offering becomes even more powerful. And so we figured when we started uh, building out NextGen HCM that we could leverage some of the core um, properties of core functionalities that ADP has to offer, build it with a way where, uh, build the NextGen HCM in a way that hasn't been done before. When I say hasn't been done before, what we've noticed just by talking to people, our, our UX team and even product team while we were uh, talking to our customers, uh, a lot of times people, what we've noticed, do not actually, are not super excited about using an HCM product. We haven't heard folks go into work and say, I can't wait to use my HCM product. You know, it's very seldom I've actually heard someone say that. Um, and there's a reason behind it, right? And this isn't a criticism of, about other products, but historically products have been built for more the practitioner and um, the and HCM products for uh, associates within an organization has been more of a, I just have to do a to-do and I got to use this software. So what we felt looking at just the changing workforce and looking at how the market is constructed, we have an opportunity to leverage some of the core um, you know, IPs of ADP and build a product that is aimed not just at the HRBP, but more at a team leader, right? Mm -hmm. How do you essentially provide the, the tools for a team leader or a manager of a team to engage with their teams more, to ensure that the teams are more um, engaged and that are more connected um, and, and just drive um, a better career transition, a better career planning for, the, uh, for their teams so that they, when they come into work, they actually have the tools that can help them do that as opposed to them relying on, you know, knowledge they've gained in an ad hoc fashion, right? So we could take that knowledge that is not, that, that is, by the way, it's all research-based. With ADP Research Institute does a lot of work around what makes, um, you know, the, the future of work. 
what makes people tick and build that into a product and provide and surface that up so that team leaders and managers can leverage these tools. We truly felt that along with a combination of working in the intersection of the two circles can help us differentiate ourselves in the market. Yeah, uh, Lohit, it's fascinating how you talk about that, right? Because so many companies you hear about today, the, the CEOs will say, you know, our number one priority is to deliver great customer experiences. But I guess you could say if, if a business is not generating great employee experiences, it's going to be much harder for them to motivate those people to then create great customer experiences. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, our uh, clients are our number one pro uh, product marketing tool. And our clients include not just the HRBPs, but also uh, people who use the product, right? So it's important for us to put them at the center of our universe and optimize around them to say, how do we get them more engaged on the tool, right? And how do we get them to actually use the tool to get better at what they want to accomplish or use the tool as a means uh, to accomplish what they're supposed to? Yeah. And Lohit, you mentioned there are some of the, the, the synergies and the benefits of being part of ADP. Could you talk a little bit more about, you know, the advantages that come with working with this, you know, iconic type of company? Yeah, I mean, you see, ADP has been in business for about 70 years, right? The, the best part of working within the ADP ecosystem is, you know, you have access to data, data that is the biggest HCM data set across the industry. And that's something no one can come in and uh, question because, you know, in the ADP ecosystem, you're paying and you have access to about 90 million plus employees, over 750,000 companies. And, you know, you have about 30 million mobile users. So when you start putting that data together, what you can, what you can offer is considerably, considerably superior to some of our other competitors, right? So we could provide metrics around turnover probability, pay equity, diversity and inclusion metrics, which are even more important, and, and then benchmark it against other companies within the industry, benchmark it uh, against companies within regions. So it's extremely, extremely um, beneficial for us to be leveraging some of these IP that ADP has and also learn from their mistakes. The other thing that, um, you know, we probably do not, um, give enough credit to some of the products that have come before us is they've been the ones who have done it for a while. So you can learn what works well, what doesn't work well, and ensure that when you are going live, you, you don't repeat those mistakes or you, or you kind of re, um, or you follow this, their footsteps in terms of optimizing for what worked well. Um, another thing that's really been helpful for us over the past 12, 14 months is as we're taking clients live, um, because some of these clients have been in other ADP products, it's actually given us better insights into how these clients operate, right? Mm -hmm. So we can kind of operationalize around that, around those metrics and around those, around that data, which truly helps us, you know, again, optimize for that client experience. It's not been easy. We've definitely made a few mistakes, um, but it, it helps us get to that nirvana spot way faster. Yeah. So faster there, Lohit, you mentioned that. And I know in our uh, previous conversation, you had talked about there's a couple of different ways where next gen HCM applies speed as a competitive advantage. Could you talk about that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So one of the primary goals when we set up um, Lefion to build our next gen HCM was um, we had to build not just for the upmarket uh, US space, but we were targeting also US HQ at MNCs and international companies. So the approach we decided to follow was to build an in-house low-code platform, uh, which takes time, right? And it takes a lot of dedication. And this is where I really appreciate the support we've got from the broader ADP leadership team, where it's, it's, not, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And when you go down a platform approach, you need to have dedicated investment over a sustained period of time for you to start seeing the return. So we've invested heavily on this local platform, but what this platform actually helps us do, it gives us uh, the speed, the advantage it gives us is the speed of execution. So we're able to iterate really quickly, uh, put a product out there, uh, and then we get consumer uh, customer feedback. And based on the feedback, we're able to tweak the product, optimize for user experience, improve any performance issues within a matter of weeks, right? So if, I, if you look at our release schedule, it's actually, we continuously release and that's a part of our DNA. And we learn by, by iterating over the product over and over again to get that right experience and to optimize for that correct, or to optimize for consumer experience. 
Lohit, would you say, is this something more that uh, clients expect now, right? They, they, they don't want to have you sort of drop off a, um, you know, a product at the loading dock door metaphorically, and then, you know, we'll see you again in two or three years. They want to be part of that co-innovation process, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. And, you know, the advantage of ours following this agile approach where we're trading with the client is we're actually sitting down with the clients every two weeks, every time we release a product or every time we have a call with them, hearing their feedback, right? Explaining why the product was built a certain way. And if they tell us certain things that they don't like about the product and things that they would like, we, we incorporate it back into the product as well. So it's, 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 a, it's a good partnership that helps them understand the product better. It also helps us make the product better. See, the enterprise space is super messy, as you know, you're well aware, yeah. Bob, and it's super challenging. You know, if a rule of thumb is the product essentially solves for 80% of the use cases and about 20% is very custom driven. So the challenge is how do you solve for that 80% versus 20%? Now, again, I think following the low code approach, we put ourselves in a position where we could solve for that 80% in a quick iterative manner. And 20%, we could leverage external third parties or open up the platform to start building that out. We're not there yet fully, but we've started that journey of going down that route, which, I, which truly I feel can actually help us accelerate um, in terms of scaling out um, the product. So Lohit, it, it, it sounds like, you know, you've, you've got some great things going on. And one of those is this combination, right? I guess it's, it's essential these days for modern cloud companies. So you, with NextGen HCM, you offer not only the, the packaged applications for customers, but also a platform. How do those work together to drive more value for your customers? Yeah, uh, this goes back to the point we were earlier discussing in terms of essentially, you know, when you look at an enterprise software, I'm just using a rule of thumb, right? The numbers may worry, but I'm just going to use the standard rule of thumb we follow is the 80-20 yeah. rule. 80, you know, enterprise software, would you build and offer solves for about 80% of the use cases, right? Um, the, the framework I use to describe it across the organization is think of it as capabilities, features, and functionalities. Mm -hmm. Capabilities is, hey, does do you have X, Y, Z? Um, and then features is, you have X, Y, Z, but can it do all these things in it? And functionality is how the, your clients use those features that are aligned to their processes internally, right? So what ends up happening is you could have the capabilities and the features, but the functionality may vary client by client because it's tied to their internal processes. And that is where the 80-20 comes in because 80% is what you saw for 20% may go into the functionality portion of it. So when we have the apps and the platform, the apps, our goal is to solve for that 80%, right? And the platform can then come in and supplement it and help with that 20% that is very client specific that you wanna make sure that you don't build client specific functionalities into the product, but you give them the ability to, to provide that functionality to the clients so that your product can scale as well as your clients are happy, right? Again, as we said, we, we put clients at the center of everything that we do and we want to optimize around their experience. And I think the platform strategy kind of lends itself really nicely to that yeah. overarching goal of ours. All right, great, thanks Lohit. And then uh, I wanted to be sure to check with you. You've used the term uh, about how NextGen HCM is built for the workforce of today. How is that different from what else is available in the market and why is that important? Yeah, and uh, you know, I think the work, the way work is done today is very different from the way work was done probably five or 10 years ago, right? Um, and fundamentally, if you look at how work, uh, work is done today, um, work, people work in matrix teams. Um, you, you know, when you look at a org chart, that is not essentially how somebody does work, right? That's just essentially just a reporting line. But you have a lot of matrix teams. You have development teams that work with business uh, product teams, that work with UX teams, that work with sales, that work with customer success and business development teams. So when you are creating an overarching project and you want to model these teams that are that have a shared goal, right? How do you essentially do that in today's day and age? So we fundamentally think, you know, the concept of agile teams, uh, which is what we call in that, which is what we call it in Next Gen HCM helps us actually model the workforce for what it is today and the future. 
And, you know, we've taken advantage, again, we've got the gift of time because we had the opportunity to start, um, you know, much later than some of our competitors. Mm -hmm. So we were able to take uh, advantage of some of the advances in technology. So we use a graph database that essentially forms the, one of the core underlying aspects of our platform to help model these teams. Now, when you create these teams, what you can do is you can have shared OKRs, right? You could get performance reviews that from your peers that you worked with as opposed to the traditional performance review where your manager is talking to X, Y, Z, you now have a way to have a more inclusive performance review that is that where you get feedback from folks who have historically, who you work with, as opposed to folks that you couldn't have gotten in unless and until you send emails and say, give me your, give me your feedback. Now within the system, you're able to accomplish that. Then you can have a space for the team where they can like share documents and they can link out with Google, uh, drive and stuff. So all that workspace is done within the agile team because that's truly how work is done today. And um, I think, you know, the, the advantage we've had is obviously the gift of time, but also understanding like how work is done today and building the product for it, we truly believe can, you know, sets us apart um, for the current workforce is also the future workforce. And maybe get you down that road a little bit that you said you want people to be excited about going to work and being able to use the next gen HCM system. Absolutely, right? Because now you've got this, you've got this space and ecosystem where you could essentially say, these are all the people I'm working with, right? Not just managing, but even I, I could like come together as a team in the space and we can set all our goals assignments, share feedback, give kudos to each other, they're doing a good job, which then can transmit across to their overarching uh, talent management. So it really helps us, um, you know, build uh, products for um, the workforce, what it's today and what it's gonna to be tomorrow. As you can see, more and more teams are going distributed. Um, and as they go distributed, you'd like to like start getting feedback from folks yeah. in, in a way where it, it's truly inclusive. So how do you build a product for that, right? Um, and what we've done is, you know, we, we really follow, again, being part of ADP is truly beneficial in multiple ways. And I, I know it sounds like a plug and I apologize if it does, but ADP has got a lot of IP, which we can leverage. So, you know, the, a recent acquisition of TMBC, which um, we truly believe is something that we, pro we promote with our clients from a talent management standpoint. So marrying the concept of you know, these agile teams with TMBC from a talent management standpoint, it's, it's super powerful, right? It is truly what I believe is the future of how talent management will be done. Um, and, you know, Marcus is a part of the ADP Research Institute. So a lot of what he's researching is, is backed in, backed by science. And then we try to incorporate that into the product and essentially help companies adopt some of these best practices. Yeah, well, he, you know, as you described that, it makes perfect sense, right? Because on the one hand, we've all heard for a number of years about the importance for businesses to have a 360 degree view of their customer, and that's essential. It sounds like part of the promise that you're offering here is why not also have a 360 degree view of your employee? Yeah, and, and historically, what we've what what has happened is you do that by sending emails and documents, right? Why not let your software do that for you, where you can bring everything together and why not make it real time, right? Why not like use uh, machine learning to essentially let folks know who you're working with saying, hey, you guys have worked together, you closed this project, do you wanna give some feedback and incorporate it? So there's real time feedback for folks, which then you don't need to go through this painful yearly process of performance reviews where there's constant feedback coming into the system and you know, that, that can then be tied to compensation and a whole bunch of things. It opens up the possibilities of how you can manage your workforce. Well, Lo, it's funny, as you mentioned that thing about the annual performance review, right? You know, uh, gosh, it was hard to, uh, to re you know, to figure out who hated those more, the manager <laughs> or the employee. It was just not a good experience in either direction. Yeah, and you know, we've one of the things that we do is before we roll it out to our clients, you know, the con there's a concept called dog fooding it. So we roll this out within um, next gen, within Lefian, the next gen HCM team, as well as broader ADP, and we're seeing the benefits of it because it used to be so painful, as you said, but now it's such a seamless activity and it's so much faster and quicker. Um, and obviously you've got to iterate on it to make it better and better, but the, the starting point, you know, the first step is to start somewhere. And I think we're actually in like step three now 
Um, and we truly believe as we work with organizations across, we can help them understand how they can start transforming some of their practices by leveraging the tools we're uh, giving, giving, giving to them. Well, Lahid, I wanted to ask you one more question and then I'll give you the last word. Uh, we've all heard for decades, it seems, this cliche that says, you know, uh, any executive will say, uh, our most important asset are employees, but there haven't in some ways been the tools in the hands of those companies to allow the employees to feel that way and to share that experience and then also to engage back up inside and around sideways in the company up and down like you've just described. So I, I hope that what you're talking about here with next gen HCM is going to be one of those things that makes that line employees are people are most important asset. I hope that'll become true, not just a cliche. Yeah, and I think what is in, you know, it goes back to the previous topic we were talking about, uh, Bob, is that, you know, they, they, people have said it, but, you know, how do you operationalize that mission, right? And that's one of the biggest challenges, because I don't think there have been tools to operationalize that at scale. Um, so I think, you know, what we are, the way we're coming at us uh, in the market is saying, we all want to be there and we truly believe that this is a tool that can help you get there. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's not going to be an overnight process though. It's going to be something that we've got to iterate across multiple clients. Um, but you know, we're, we've been at this for, for, for a minute now. And I, you know, we will continue being at it till we get it perfect. Well, great. Lahitten. Could I offer you a last word, anything that we haven't talked about you want to be sure to mention? Uh, I think I just want to thank you for the opportunity. It's truly an honor for me to be talking to you. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time going over some of your previous podcasts and just looking at uh, the audience numbers. So congratulations on all the success. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to spend uh, this evening with you. Oh, well, it, it's a pleasure. You and people like you, Lahir, make, make this world quite interesting here with these new solutions you're bringing. So thanks very much for being with us here at Cloud Wars Live. Thank you, Bob. And thank you for those kind words. Absolutely. Cheers, folks. And thanks to all of you for being with us. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, little exploration of what's going on at Lithion with its next-gen HCM. We hope we'll see you back here again sometime soon.